Today I have the pleasure of speaking with Dr. Jonathan Gluckman from Sixth Wave Innovations. How are you, Dr. Gluckman? I'm wonderful. Thanks for having me today. Thanks. Dr. Glockman, it's such a pleasure to meet you in person. I've heard so much about you in the marketplace. And in particular, I understand that you now have, or you're developing a new technology that's going to help us with the testing for COVID-19. Is that true? Yeah. Yeah, we, uh, we have been drawing on our past experience in uh, developing molecularly imprinted polymers. Uh, we've, uh, we've successfully launched other products and commercialized them that have very, very similar properties. So for us, the extension to uh, detecting a virus, we treat a virus just like, uh, just like any other molecule, but it happens to be a relatively large molecule for us relative to other ones we've looked at, but um, essentially we'll create a molecular imprint for it uh, that will isolate that virus from other viruses based on its size and its shape and the specifics of the spike proteins and such that are on it. And then uh, once we capture it in our polymer, we'll be able to do detection either using color metrics or, uh, or electronics. Well, I'll tell you, that sounds absolutely super exciting, but I am often called in to translate uh, the scary smart club down to investment quality talk. So I need you to dumb that down for me. So basically what you have is a COVID-19 test that allows them not to stick a Q-tip up my nose. Is that correct? We're moving in those directions. Yeah. So essentially you can think about um, our polymer almost like exactly like an antibody in the body. So if you think about the, the virus itself, it's got its size and its shape. And we create an imprint in our polymer for that exact virus. And then uh, we'll, we'll detect that directly based on, uh, based on our chemistry. So uh, we really don't care where the sample comes from. So we're planning to introduce this uh, into some, some standard kinds of color tests, maybe a lateral flow test that people have heard about, but more importantly, we're going to uh, be working to integrate this into masks and breathalyzers, and then we can just utilize uh, the breath. As we all know, that's the main transmission method. And so if you think about putting a mask on, not only will that mask provide protection from other people who might be infected and provide protection from uh, from you if you happen to be infected, but it could also uh, right there be the test for COVID. So anytime you take that off, you could look at it and perhaps see a color change and know, oh my gosh, I must have that. It's time for me to isolate. Uh, but more importantly, we're going to start integrating this into uh, either uh, OCR, you know, those little uh, barcodes, if you will, so we could set a barcode that could be scanned by your, tele, uh, by your telephone and then software to tell you that you've, uh, you've been infected or even integrate that into an RFID chip so that uh, all of that electronic transmission, the ability to collect uh, tracing and tracking information is right there with the test. No additional infrastructure, no worries about uh, you know, data entry mistakes and that kind of stuff. So we're really trying to make this simple, cost-effective, inexpensive, so everybody can do it uh, all the time and, and get to feeling more comfortable about being out and, and opening up society again. So Dr. Gluckman, I have to tell you, all of that sounds really amazing, but I don't understand it other than I know we're talking nanotechnology. And I understand that your COVID-19 test will alleviate us from some of the more intrusive testing uh, you know, practices that they're currently utilizing. Can you tell us more about that, please? Yeah, so our technology is pointed to being able to detect the COVID-19 from your breath or from other sources. So we're not only working on that, but uh, we recently were uh, just given a grant by the Canadian government to work with uh, York University and CTRI to actually take our molecular imprint version and use that for detection of the virus in wastewater supplies and air handling systems and all the other kinds of methods that this might be transmitted. 
Well, speaking of that, getting a Canadian grant is, <laughs> I have to tell you, quite a miracle. So obviously you have some competitive advantages with your technology. Can you talk to us a little bit about what made you, separated you from the pack and helped you receive that very prominent award? Oh, well, thank you. Um, so our technology is built completely on uh, polymers. So the good news is that we don't have to wait for viruses to be grown, for antibodies to be discovered, for, uh, for those things to be grown in large measure and put into tests. So once we know what the virus is, we can start making our molecular imprints very quickly, which means that our time to market for this and for any new virus that comes out is much faster than other tests. We don't need heavy electronics, so it doesn't have to be administered by skilled people. It doesn't need a laboratory in order to get the results. And as you stated earlier, you know, we don't need to stick something up into our brains in order to collect a sample and worry about having a nurse practitioner or some skilled physician there to be able to collect those samples. Those are gonna be significant advantages. Also, it will be much cheaper and much easier for us to produce in mass. We don't have to worry about reagent shortages and all of the rest of the things which we've seen the supply chain uh, have direct impact on our ability to get this under control. And of course, every other phone call I'm receiving, I mean, I received one last week, you know, Tracy, we have, you know, the gentleman who came up with the vaccination for SARS, you have to listen to him. I mean, it's, it's like every other email in my inbox is we have the answer, we have a better test, or we have a potential solution. And obviously, this is our number one mandate for all of us as we would like to return back to whatever normal is. So I'll tell you, can you tell us maybe, I think what we'd really like to hear, and I'm certain this is gonna be challenging for you, uh, most very bright people don't like to brag about themselves, but can you tell us a little bit more about your background and why you may be the answer we're seeking. So everything that we do here as a company starts from what is it that we're trying to accomplish? What is needed out there in the environment? And so the pandemic provided a unique opportunity, uh, which was a follow on actually of some initial work we had done in 2016 when Ebola was the big virus everybody was working on. And so we start with the premise of, hey, how are we going to gain trust? What is it that we need to test for? How do people get involved in controlling their own destiny with regard to this virus and their exposure to it? And once we started there, then we could start defining what a good product needs to be. And then we could decide, hey, can our technology meet that, that requirement? And in this case, we can. We can create something because it's all in synthetics and plastics. Not only can we create something that's fast and easy to use, which we've done before in other products, but it's something that everybody should want to use and nobody should need any training to be able to use. And those are the most important things, accuracy of the test, sensitivity of the test, and of course, if it's going out for point of use and for personal use, is it going to be able to be used? This should be as simple as a pregnancy test or a blood glucose test. And that's what we can accomplish. Well, as we like to say in the South, amen. And uh, you certainly have gained my trust, Dr. Gluckman, and you came highly, highly recommended to us. So I don't know if you can comment on this yet, but in an ideal situation, clearly we want to get you to market as quickly as possible. What kind of timeline, best case scenario, are we looking at? Uh, we're very hopeful that we're going to have a uh, first proof of demonstration that we're actively collecting the COVID-19 virus uh, in between 90 and 120 days from now. Uh, not too long after that, we'll have our first test that we'll be able to start doing uh, certification testing. Uh, we're looking very, very much forward to not only working on the government grant that we've been issued, but also with uh, a lot of the infrastructure here in the Halifax area and in the Alberta area, where we're already teaming with the University of Alberta and the, uh, and the Virology Institute there 
to help us gain access to the virus and to uh, help us move forward. So between the connections that we have uh, in industry and the connections that we have with the federal governments, uh, we're hoping to move this very, very quickly to market. So the technology will be in market best case scenario when? Uh, I would say just after the first of the year, if we're really, uh, if we really keep at it. If we're really lucky and we get everybody behind you, is that correct? That's right, yeah. So Dr. Gluckman, you know, I know you're so incredibly busy trying to get this to market for all of us, for the benefit of all of us. I've had a COVID-19 test. It took me a day and a half to recover from. And uh, so we're all cheering for you. So there's a lot of different companies that are on the market right now. I think just in your neck of the woods, uh, there's a company called Sona. Uh, can you tell us how you kind of compare with companies like that? Well, that's a great question. Uh, you know, there are three basic kinds of tests that have uh, been marketed and are coming out. The one that we all know about most is PCR, where they have a big electronics and you have to send your samples in and wait a few days for your results back. Um, but Sona and other people are coming out with antigen tests and antibody tests. And they're trying to incorporate them into these lateral flow, kind of like a, uh, a pregnancy test is. And they're looking for different things. So an antibody test is actually testing for your immune response to the virus. Well, that's interesting to know, but you've already been infecting people. So it's a little bit late to be looking for antibodies because they take time to show up in the body. Antigen tests are kind of looking for the virus, but in order to produce an antigen test, you have to produce a bunch of antibodies and incorporate them into the test. And that makes the time to develop them and field them kind of long, which is why we're six months into this pandemic already, and you're just starting to see those tests come out. And as we've seen, the reliability of some of those tests has been fairly low, and so they're gonna to continue to have some problems. I'm loving being here in Halifax. It's a wonderful place to be. We're so lucky that, you know, Sona's working on some piece of this and the Dalhousie University people are working on pieces of this. We're very lucky to be in a nice little epicenter here of a lot of good work being done on this pandemic and viruses in general. And we have unique problems here, you know, with tourism being a major source of income and shipping and those kinds of things. Our goal is to get those things back moving as quickly as possible in a safe way. And so we're really hoping that we'll be able to overcome some of the challenges that these other tests have faced. We'll be able to implement our test in ways that those tests can't be matured to. There just is no logical pathway to get them there. And uh, we're really excited about being able to contribute uh, something good to, to humanity and everybody's lives. Well, I'll tell you, we're all cheering for you. So everybody out there, an investor intel, we've got nanotechnology, we have the sixth wave, we have to Dr. Jonathan Gluckman. And if you don't mind, Dr. Gluckman, we would like to interview you every couple of weeks as we, as we watch this race for better COVID-19 testing. Thank you so much. Great, it was a pleasure to be with you. I look forward to chatting again.